Hello, my name is Greg Villalobos, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Adventure Spec clothing that we wore in our latest Trans Euro Trail adventure. Adventure Spec clothing is really built around the idea of ADV layering. Um, and the principle there is that you wear the clothes that you need uh, when you're riding, uh, in the conditions that you're riding through. And if you don't need that particular layer, you don't need to wear it. So really, uh, when I talk to people about our gear that haven't kind of come across us before, I kind of describe it. Going into um, a big outdoor um, walking shop or hiking shop or something like that, um, and you walk in and you look at all the gear and they've got different layers for everything. And really the outdoor community have been doing this a long time. Um, you have mid base layers, mid layers and outer layers. Uh, if it's pouring with rain, you put on a waterproof jacket. If it's not raining, you take your waterproof jacket off and put it in your rucksack. So the way I describe it is, imagine that, but suitable for adventure motorcycling. It has the exact same philosophy, but also has the uh, technical elements that motorcyclists need, which include uh, protection. And so this approach is pretty well suited to um, lightweight adventure riding, trans Euro trail, backcountry stuff, because you're not just sitting on a motorway for uh, 300 miles blasting somewhere uh, where one jacket and pant would be perfectly fine. Really, you're encountering lots of different riding conditions, a bit of road, a bit of trail, you're getting hot, sweaty, you're picking up your bike, you're getting off your bike uh, at camp, you're putting up your tent, all this kind of stuff. Um, it's gonna rain, maybe it rains for part of the day, not all of the day. Um, yeah, so you need a very adaptable clothing system, and that's what we've done here at Adventure Spec, giving you the ability to adapt your clothing to the conditions that you're riding through. So in this film, I'm gonna talk you through uh, the clothing that I wore and some of my friends wore on our latest trip. We went from uh, the south of England to the north of Spain and rode through to the mountains. Uh, we went from kind of pretty moderate, uh, what is it, springtime? Um, springtime in 2022, so, I guess we were going from anything from uh, 10 degrees up to 20 degrees uh, Celsius, that is. Um, we went prepared for much colder conditions and, and kind of fortunately we didn't really need it. And I'm going to go through the film and some photos and I'm going to kind of go into a bit more detail about what we we're all wearing um, and help you get an idea of how the whole ADV layering system works and how you might like to adapt it to your own uh, trips and adventures. Okay, so this was the gang. So we've got Clive and Davey, Will um, and uh, Adam and Noel. Um, so uh, and myself, I took the photo. Uh, we had a healthy mix of CRF uh, 300 and 250 rallies. Uh, Adam's on his G310GS BMW. Uh, and there's two 690s there. Davey's on the older one and Will is on the newer one. And I was on my KTM 450 EXC. So I'll kick off with my head. Uh, my head was uh, protected by a Schubert C1 uh, Adventure helmet. Um, it's not a kind of hardcore uh, off-road uh, helmet. Um, it's kind of, I'd say it's more style for like road touring with kind of light off-road. It's not that aggressive. Um, but the reason why I wear it is because it's got a flip-up lid. Um, I very much like being able to flip it up um, when I'm talking to people. Uh, it's better on camera because you can see and hear me. Um, and also I uh, am like the, the team photographer and I very much like being able to take my camera and put it to my eye and take photos without having to take my helmet off. Um, I like looking through uh, the lens. Some people just look at the screen on the back and obviously if you've got a phone, you don't necessarily need to do that, but um, it's, a, it's a good helmet. Um, it's not the lightest, it's pretty quiet actually. Um, in the dusty conditions, the closing mechanism did kind of get a little bit sticky, so it didn't firmly close. Um, I kind of just had to like wash it out a little bit. Um, and now that I'm back in the UK, it's, it's working fine. But yeah, so, so anything that has an open and closing where you've got a lot of dust and grit around um, has an opportunity to kind of fail uh, or get sticky. So in that helmet, uh, we had, uh, most of the group had comms and we were using the um, Senna system. So I had the uh, Senna specific uh, model for the Schubert C1 Adventure helmet. Um, it works well. Uh, I kind of describe it 
uh, or general in, intercoms on bikes is motorcycling before and motorcycling after. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Not everyone enjoys it as much as me. They're a bit temperamental. It's a bit of a pain to get um, connected. You kind of go out of line of sight and they, you drop out of comms. And um, I would say they probably worked as intended maybe 65% of the time. <laughs> and you might be like riding a, along and then all of a sudden someone else pops up into your ear. But when you do have comms, um, it's a lot of fun and it's great to be able to kind of ride and chat with your friends. They're fiddly, they're a pain. The only reason why I don't give up on it is because the good bits outweigh the ne negatives. So Noel here has got a, um, a Nolan N72X, I think it's called. The thing to note about Noel's helmet is that it converts from a full face to a half face uh, helmet. So uh, when he's doing the motorway stuff, you can f clip the, the, um, the chin bar in. Um, and it becomes a full face helmet. And then when uh, Noel's on the trails, which is most of the time once we got to where we we're going, he's just taken that out and is operating as a half face or open face helmet, which um, it, it's a very different experience. It's a much better experience, to be honest. Um, depends where you sit on your um, approach to kind of comfort and safety. But if you don't mind riding an open face helmet, it's, I think that this helmet is a really interesting combination that you can just, you know, take the chin bar off, shove it in your bag and have the freedom of an open face. Um, yeah, I would consider buying one for myself for one of my future trips, I think. Okay, so we've got Adam, uh, the youngster of the group. He's got his Bell MX-9 helmet um, and he's got like the full reflective visor on there. Uh, it's, I think... Uh, it's a good looking helmet. Um, I've never used one. I don't know. Uh, I can't talk about how heavy it is or how quiet it is, um, but it's got a very particular look. Um, Adam is wonderful on camera, uh, as you will hear in the film if you've already watched it. Does my head look like it's sinking now? It does. It does, yeah. Yeah. And your hopes and dreams of a long life. <laughs> because we're going to push you off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the voiceover is done from Adam. He had um, his GoPro mic'd into his helmet, so he would be riding and talking and filming at the same time. I think Adam um, likes the anonymity of uh, or protection of having a, a mirrored visor when he's on camera. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a uh, well, is it a good helmet? It suits Adam. I couldn't tell you if it's good because I've never really used one. So this is Will, and he's got a Nex adventure helmet on. Um, I'm not 100 sure on the model. Um, Will was the only one that opted to use goggles. Uh, I think that it's genuinely kind of to help him for, with his vision as he's riding. It has a very different look. Um, you know, you've got everyone here from full open face, smiley, uh, uh, smiley face Noel, um, all the way through to Adam with his full kind of visor down, mirrored visor, and Will with his mirrored um, lenses. I think they look absolutely awesome in the photos. Uh, I always kind of think that um, if you're looking at a photo of someone wearing uh, a mirrored uh, or dark visor, you can't see their eyes. It's much easier for you to imagine yourself being the rider um, looking at the picture. I think that's why a lot of magazines um, do that. Um, but the flip side is on the trail, you do look a bit more aggressive when you're walk riding past walkers and people in villages and all the rest of it. So it's a bit of a trade up. Um, we had the full mix. so. Uh, everyone from smiley faces to full mirrored. So on to base layers. It's the bit that you hardly ever see and it's the hardest bit for me to photograph and show everyone because you need a very brave model. Um, so the purpose of a base layer is to help regulate temperature. So you need something that's um, going to keep you warm when it's cold, but also when it's hot, you want something that um, wicks away the sweat. So if you're sweating into it, you want it to wick away. So the majority of the guys on the trip were using Adventure Spec core base layers. Um, so that's core, uh, sh uh, core long sleeve, core short sleeve on the top, and then core shorts and core uh, long legs on the bottom. I'll talk about the bottoms in a minute, uh, further into the film. Um, so in this photo, uh, <laughs> the guys are uh, making a little prayer um, in memory of my side stand, which had uh, 30 seconds prior to this photo being taken snapped. What have you done? Uh, the good old faithful 
has done what they do and given up the ghost. Mm. Oh, what a pain in the arse that is. Um, that was the rest me with the rest of the trip not being able to um, uh, put the bike on its side stand, so I had to lean it on everything. Anyway, uh, a healthy amount of, oh, it's a KTM, that's what they do, uh, banter going on. Will here, you can see, is wearing a core, Adventure Spec core short sleeve um, and he was very comfortable wearing that as just a general um, t-shirt when he's off the bike. Uh, Will is pretty athletic, he's got a good uh, physique, um, not everyone is as comfortable, it's a, it's a skin tight um, base layer so it's very much, it's very practical um, but it doesn't leave a lot to the imagination so uh, if you are uh, comfortable uh, with your body being out on show, uh, core base layer is absolutely fine. Otherwise, um, some people choose to wear a t-shirt or something over the top of that if they need to. So here again, you can see Will is wearing his core short sleeve underneath his super shirt. Now I'm going to talk about the super shirt in a minute, don't worry. Um, but this was a really good combo. The super shirt works very well with something very light and thin underneath it. One of the key features of the, of the core base layer range is they've got an iron, a silver iron thread um, woven into it, which sounds very technical, and I don't 100% understand how it does what it does, but what it means is that it resists odour. Um, so any moisture um, wicks off very quickly, and these things, these tops uh, and bottoms, uh, are very surprisingly resistant to odour, so you can wear them for quite a long time without them starting to smell. Um, and I noticed as well that Noel on the trip would wear uh, his top uh, the right way round and then he'd turn it the uh, other way round the next day. And I think uh, he had a couple of tops with him. So he would rotate one washing and, dry and drying while he was wearing the other one. And you can kind of get through um, a 10 day trip with uh, surprisingly few. I think you could probably do 10 days with just two pairs of um, top and pants uh, at a stretch. That's kind of what I did. It would have been more comfortable with three. Um, but yeah, if you're wearing one and you've washed one and drying it, you always have a clean set on the way. So this is Will, Noel and Davey. Um, and Will there on the left is just wearing his core short sleeve um, at a cafe stop. Um, and Davey on the right there has got his super shirt on. Again, I'm coming to that. So at the end of the trip, we made it up into the mountains and it started getting colder. And this was one of kind of the best camp nights, nights camping that we had. Um, and you can see Will here has got his long sleeve, core long sleeve on, which is essentially the same as the core short sleeve, but just has longer sleeves. Um, it's really great when the temperature drops and you're riding. It's also pretty good to just wear in bed all night um, if you need it. So the super shirt, uh, if you have been following VentureSpec for a while, you have probably heard us talking about this. It's a very exciting project for us. It is a very lightweight, armored and abrasion uh, protective shirt. Uh, and it really turns on its head how you dress for motorcycle riding. It's CEAA rated. We took a stuntman and asked him to jump off a moving bike for us to fully test how it would perform in um, road circumstances and he did what you're seeing now is most motorcyclists worst nightmare so it's at about this point that you're kind of thinking this is gonna hurt and i really hope that my gear is up to the job There's another film um, that goes into a lot more detail about uh, that stunt and you can find out more about how the um, super shirt performed for um, our stuntman. Um, but in the context of adventure motorcycling, what it does is it allows us, uh, so when I'm riding in it, it allows me to, um, instead of relying on my outer layer to provide my ultimate abrasion protection, it all of a sudden allows me to put my um, all my motorcycle riding protection next to my body and then put whatever I want over the top, which gives me a lot of freedom, um, especially when you're riding in hot environments. So 
I could essentially have the soup shirt on and be riding in a t-shirt and have the same level of CE certified protection as quite a substantial motorcycle jacket. It's very liberating and I'm just going to show you a few examples of how some of the guys in our trip wore it and what they wore with it. So here you've got um, Clive. So Clive is uh, size XL, a little bit on the larger side. I uh, don't think Clive would mind me saying that. Um, the super shirt is very stretchy. Um, it's designed, um, it's not really designed like a jacket, it is designed like a base layer. Um, so it's kind of designed to stretch with your with your body. So Clive's wearing it here with chest armour. It comes with chest armour. The zip comes down the side, um, which allows you to have a full um, chest armour plate over your uh, front of your body, um, which is you know very protective should you kind of go over your handlebars, you need something there to protect your chest. So this is Noel, Noel's a size large. Um, he's opted not to wear it with a chest protector for comfort, but he has the shoulder, elbow and back protector in. This was, we'd stopped um, at a, uh, for, for some food at a, a, a town square, it was very hot. Is that a pilchard? Is that a pilchard? Yeah, oh, yeah there we go, pilchard, that's what I was. Um, I don't know really. But anyway, we're gonna get back on the trail now. Um, and I think he was, well, I know for a fact that Noel was going to wear that with the trailhead jersey over the top, but he just realised he'd left his trailhead jersey back at the hotel. So there was uh, some consternation to do with that. But essentially, it was very hot and this allowed Noel to work, ride in um, uh, very lightweight clothing. So this is stopped at a cafe. Davy there on the right is uh, wearing the super shirt. Um, I guess I kind of included this just to show that it's... Um, so Davy is an XL. Um, it's something that you, it is, it is tight to the body, but it's not so tight that it shows off every little kind of wrinkle and bump. Um, Davey was very comfortable sitting there eating his, um, well, what was it, huevo, eggs. Um, anyway, he was happy sitting there eating his eggs and having his coffee um, in the soup shirt. This is Will. Uh, I think Will had just been working on his bike. It was at the start of the trip, actually, that he had a little electrical gremlin on his 690 that he just sorted out. So again, Will is not using the chest armor. Um, you can see there, Will is probably, a, I think he's a size medium, I would say. Um, and it's quite a comfortable fit for Will. I guess the thing that I want to point out here is um, the arm length. So the arm length is uh, purposely long because the um, end of the sleeves have got a hole for you to put your thumb through. And what this does is when you're riding, it means that, that should you come off, um, the, all of the sleeve and all the armor will stay where it needs to be because it's not gonna ride up your arm. Um, early versions of the shirt, we had a bit of a shorter arm length and it was a little tight around um, the thumb there. Um, so we lengthened that out and the version here, which is the production version, is quite uh, generous uh, on the arm length, but it's very comfortable once you start wearing it. So this is, we'd stopped uh, after a very long hot day actually, um, just kind of looking into this village. Uh, I, I love this photo, it's like something out of a Disney movie or something. Um, but we've got Adam there on the left and he's wearing the linesman jacket and on the right you can see Davey. Um, and I included this picture because you can see quite clearly the uh, the back armor and how that fits into the shirt. David had ridden most of the day just in the soup shirt on, on this particular day. So uh, I don't believe he had anything on underneath. He was kind of going maximum. Uh, it was very hot and he was going maximum cooling. Um, and the soup shirt does, despite its look, it's it, the material that it com is made out of, can, it has two color options, black or uh, white and you can't dye it. Um, and so we opted with the black and I feel that the black makes it look heavier than it is. Um, it actually breathes a lot. And my advice is to anyone wearing the soup shirt is actually factor in that it's probably gonna be more breathable than you realize. And if it's not very hot, you may well need uh, another layer underneath or on top. And this is Will wearing the soup shirt with his linesman jacket. Um, the linesman jacket have got the sleeves taken off. We had quite a lot of people asking us about why the sleeves were removable um, because the sleeves of the linesman jacket also contain the armor and if you take them off you're removing the armor from the jacket this is why because we always knew that the super shirt was coming um, and what this allows you to do is have the super shirt on your, as your protective armored abrasion resistant base layer you can take the arms off the linesman and the linesman just becomes a very comfortable gilet gilet yeah gilet so you can see Noel's got the same setup there. He's riding along, stood up with um, the super shirt on with his linesman on without arms. 
And so most of the guys actually did that, um, took the line, arms off the linesman for a lot of the hot sections, and it really helps kind of improve the cooling um, and the airflow as you're riding along. So we've done base layers, um, we're now moving on to mid layers. Mid layers are really designed to help you regulate your temperature. Um, they're not going to keep you dry per se. Um, they're not designed to protect you if you fall off. It's really about helping you stay comfortable um, when temperatures are changing. Um, uh, the jacket I am wearing here that you're looking at, this is the new uh, Adventure Spec Baltic hybrid jacket. Um, it's new, the old one is blue, this one is black. Um, this is designed uh, with a very stretchy material uh, that is designed to stretch over body armour. So you could wear, for example, the super shirt um, and then put this Baltic hybrid over the top and then put a rain layer such as the single tracker over the top or the linesman jacket over the top of this. Um, I probably wouldn't necessarily ride in this on its own. And, because it's going to get dirty and dusty, I'd probably put something over the top. Um, but if it were cold uh, or, uh, or reasonably cold, I would put this on. Um, and like I said, um, it's a very kind of, it's probably the closest jacket that we have to a lifestyle jacket. I wear this a lot at home, um, go down the shops, take the kids to school, whatever. Um, it looks great um, in a relaxed environment. But if you're wearing it in an adventure riding scenario, um, it will stretch over your body armor. Um, it has insulated panels where you need it, which is around like your chest and your kidneys and um, your lower back um, and the other areas so under the arms and on the, the legs, uh, the legs, the arms and the center of your back. Um, it is not insulated because that's where you're getting hot and where you're sweating. Um, it's pretty versatile. I would say um, out of everything that I own, um, adventure spec clothing wise, this gets the most use just because it can be worn very casually as well. So this is uh, Noel enjoying some of the uh, sunshine rays on the ferry. Oh, such a long ferry. It was like two, two nights to get there. Anyway, um, this is Noel wearing it on the ferry. And on the right there, Will is wearing the Baltic insulated jacket. So the Baltic insulated jacket is uh, a more substantial insulated mid-layer. Um, it is not made of this stretchy material. It's fully insulated all the way throughout. It has an insulated hood as well. Um, the hood and the shoulders are made of a slightly more um, waterproof material. I'm not going to say that it is fully waterproof, but uh, they're designed to kind of help kind of brush off a shower if it's raining at camp. Um, if it were properly raining, you would want to put a waterproof layer over the top. Um, we, uh, so Noel, myself and Will all had the new version, which is a blue version. The insulation used in these jackets is pretty special. It adapts to the ambient temperature. So the Baltic insulated was used pretty effectively here when we were up at altitude. Um, again, this was on kind of one of the last nights camping. Um, and the thing that I used a lot is, well, A, when we were camping and it was boiling hot, I kept it in its dry bag and used it as a pillow. So I can say it's a pretty comfy pillow. Um, but as the temperature dropped and we were up there, um, I wore it while we were camping, having dinner, all the rest of it. Um, and not on this trip because it wasn't cold enough, but on previous trips, I just keep it on in my sleeping bag. Um, it allows me to, if I quite quickly and easily regulate my temperature during the night. So if it gets cold and I wake up, I can just put it on. Um, or I can go to sleep with it on and if I get hot I can just take it off and you can see Will there's taken the hood off so it's got this pop button hood so you can remove the hood. The hood actually if you're really kind of trying to go for a, a, a small pack space you can take the hood off um, and you know take a hat or something like that but um, yeah it's pretty adaptable. So it's called the linesman jacket in honour of the kind of very, very generous um, volunteers who look after the trans Euro Trail um, and, the, and the GPX route. So each country um, on the trans Euro Trail has got a linesman and their responsibility is to curate uh, and manage the track through their country. So without the linesman, there'd be no trans Euro Trail. So uh, that is why this jacket is called the linesman jacket. Um, it was one of our first jackets. It's very, very popular. Um, it's a bit of a different approach to trail riding. Um, it's a soft shell with Kevlar panels on the key um, impact areas, so your shoulders, 
and your elbows and your kind of hips. It's an incredibly comfortable jacket. Um, it's really designed uh, on the understanding that you uh, are going to be, you're not necessarily be going to be riding at high speeds down the motorway for a long amount of time in this jacket. You're probably going to be using it on the trails and you need something that's um, essentially a, a, a soft shell jacket that has got added uh, protection for motorcycling. So you can see Noel here um, riding through some of the dusty tracks um, at the start of our trip. Um, he stood up. So this is the version that he's wearing here is the new version. Um, the Kevlar panels are a little bit more pronounced. Um, they feel a little bit more substantial. That's because we moved to um, a fabric with a higher Kevlar um, uh, content in it. Um, and it's slightly yellow because Kevlar naturally is yellow and it's very difficult to dye different colors. So the reason why this uh, the panels look slightly different to our older versions is because it's got a higher Kevlar content in it. So it's Clive looking very happy um, with a great big view behind him. Um, Clive is slightly larger, uh, he's an XL, so just showing how uh, the jacket fits with a larger body. Noel's got the model look going on here. I think he definitely knew that I had the, uh, the camera lens pointed at him for this one. I just want to kind of include this photo just to show kind of that it's a pretty relaxed looking jacket. Um, when we were originally designing this jacket, we wanted something that would look uh, or be as comfortable off the bike in a town square having a coffee um, as on the bike. So whilst it is still a, a technical bit of riding gear, it's something that you don't really feel like you're walking around looking like a spaceman in a load of kind of um, hardcore motorcycle gear when you are off the bike in a more kind of touristy environment. So there's a studio shot. This is Chris back here in the studio. So um, Chris is a size medium. Um, you can see here Chris is wearing it with the linesman pant, which I will talk about in a minute. On the back of the jacket, it's got uh, some very large vents that run down the sides. And the reason why they're on the sides and not across the top is that we know you're probably going to be wearing a rucksack or you might be wearing a rucksack. And so you want vents that work uh, with a rucksack and are not going to be blocked by a rucksack. Um, so those vents run down the side of the jacket. Um, there's also vents on the front chest. So these front chest pockets, once you open them, uh, you can use them as a pocket, but there's also like a, a mesh, it's a mesh pocket. So they help with airflow going through and the rear, vents at the rear of the jacket help with airflow exit, um, helps keep you cool. Um, in this photo here, uh, Chris has taken the arms off. So this is uh, showing how it works with the super shirt. In its standard format, the linesman jacket has um, force field level two armor in its shoulders and its elbows. Um, and that comes with the jacket. It is CEA rated. Uh, once you take those sleeves off, the armor is removed. Um, but if you have the super shirt on underneath, you're essentially wearing a double A protective layer underneath your A -let a rated linesman jacket. On the back of the jacket, there's uh, two pockets on either side and they're specifically sized to be able to fit those um, arms that you've removed inside them. Um, for comfort, um, I would probably just put those in my rucksack or in my bag, but they're there should you be riding without the ability to kind of carry those arms anywhere else. You can just shove them in there um, in the back of the jacket and off you go. So this is Noel. Um, after having his little incident with his CRF rally where it got knocked over. Um, it was boiling hot this day, so everyone was doing their best to stay in the shade. And Will, uh, doing his thing uh, with the drone. Um, Will got some amazing aerial shots in this film. Um, very, very kind of skilled drone pilot. And you can find out more about Lines from Jacket and all the other gear um, on our website, eventspec.com. Um, where there's plenty uh, more information that goes into more detail about all the specifics of the materials and the protection and the CE ratings. Okay, so there was another jacket um, worn on this trip by Davey. Um, so Davey here is wearing the Mongolia jacket, uh, the Mongolia trail jacket. So there are two versions of this. There's the Mongolia and the Atacama. Um, they were originally designed, or the Atacama jacket was originally designed for Lyndon Poskett to take part in the uh, Dakar rally in 2017, I think. Um, he did the Malimoto class, which is the very, very difficult self-supported -support class. Um, and Lyndon finished uh, two years consecutively, um, the Dakar rally. Um, and he was wearing the Atacama jacket and pant. 
Um, essentially, Linden was our kind of test guinea pig for a lot of this gear because we, we made that stuff very specifically for his requirements in the Dakar rally, which are obviously a, a, a balance of um, protection, comfort, um, heat regulation, all that kind of stuff. So the Mongolia, or the Atacama that Linden was wearing um, is very much designed for uh, a neck brace. So it doesn't have a collar because we know that you're going to be racing with a neck brace. The uh, Mongolia jacket is a more relaxed version. Uh, when I say more relaxed, I really mean it's designed for trail riding um, and adventure riding where you're not wearing a neck brace. So it has a collar that comes up to your chin. Um, the material used in that is a very, very tough um, open weave material. So it's very, very well um, uh, placed for people that are riding in hot environments. Uh, I was wearing one the other day here in the UK and I was actually getting too cold wearing it. It wasn't hot enough. Um, so if you're riding anywhere where the sun is shining and it's kind of 20 degrees plus, it's a great, great uh, cooling jacket. Um, it has uh, extra abrasion protection across the shoulders and the elbows um, and it comes with the um, force for level 2 armour in the back shoulders and elbows um, but for this trip um, David removed that armour because he was wearing the super shirt underneath um, which again is a very very cool way to ride in hot environments. So Davey's a size XL, he's quite a big guy, builder um, so this is showing how it fits with um, a Krieger rucksack uh, on the back. And Davey's also wearing the Mongolia trail pant which I will come on to um, but essentially that jacket and pant are designed to work together. And you can see in this photo the stretch panels on the back. So um, uh, across kind of the back of the shoulder there, there's these very, very stretchy panels um, which are there to accommodate not only the um, uh, back armour that you might be wearing, but if you were racing, um, you can wear your hydration pack underneath this jacket. And the reason why you do that is because you have race numbers pinned onto the back of the jacket and you want to kind of you can't wear a rucksack over the top of that um, so if you had something on underneath uh, this jacket will stretch over the top of that okay so the next outer layer that i want to talk about is the trailhead jacket um, i have no photos of this from our trip because my model noel uh, left it in a hotel um, <laughs> near the start of the trip but I know Noel really enjoys this jacket and uh, I know that because uh, he was pretty devastated. Uh, I thought at one point he might make us go back and get it, but he, but he didn't. Um, but anyway, the trailhead jacket, um, what makes this different? Essentially, this is a very lightweight. It's, it, it's a motocross jersey that you zip up. Simple as that. Um, I spent a lot of time um, putting motocross jerseys on and taking them off. Um, and essentially what happens is you pull them on and they get stuck on the, the, especially on the armor on the back and you need someone else to help pull it down. And once it's on, it's on, um, but it's not something you want to be taking on and off. Um, and when we were thinking about this jacket, we were really thinking about how can we kind of improve that experience? And it was very, very simple to put a zip on the front. Um, and this allows you to put the jacket on and take it off very, very quickly. The trailhead is made of three different materials. It's got a slightly uh, tougher material on the shoulders and arms, and that's there to help protect you if you're riding through kind of brambles. It's not abrasion protection. It's not necessarily gonna protect you if you fall off, but it's gonna resist snagging and tearing. And then it has a slightly tougher material on the um, rest of the body. Under the arms and on the uh, straight down the back where you're getting hot and sweating is a very um, open weave uh, perforated material to help keep you cool. So I think the interesting thing here is you can be wearing the trailhead jersey over the top of the super shirt and you have CEAA protection. It doesn't, doesn't look like it, but you are as protected as uh, quite a substantial motorcycle jacket. Okay, so we're on to the waterproof layers. Thankfully, on this trip, we only had to wear them once, and that was on the last day on the way to the ferry. Oh, it's so cold and wet today. This is the <laughs> hour and a two and a half hours of motorcycling I've ever done. <laughs> it's freezing. It's Spain. 
It is, I think, probably some of the worst riding I've ever done. It's so, so wet. So if I'm gonna wear my waterproofs on one day, that was the day to wear them. Um, the rest of the time it was boiling hot, which was great. Um, when it did rain, it absolutely hammered. We were like eight hours riding through the motorway, I don't know, 150 miles, something like that, all day. Um, and we definitely needed our waterproof. So this charming photo uh, of Adam <laughs> being as charming as ever, he's wearing the single track jacket. So I've got some studio shots here of Chris uh, not swearing at the camera. Uh, the single track jacket is, uh, I love my single track jacket. I wear it all the time. Um, it's just my, essentially it is, uh, Imagine going into that outdoor store that I mentioned at the start and going to the waterproof rail uh, and you're finding something there that's got a, a very highly uh, waterproof, very breathable um, and very versatile waterproof jacket. Um, it's got a hood, which is something that is quite unusual on a motorcycle jacket. Most manufacturers would be saying, why would you need a hood if you've got a helmet on? fair point when you're riding. Um, the single track jacket is really designed for riders who need the versatility of having a waterproof jacket when they're not on the bike. So you're at camp, you're doing whatever you're doing, going for a walk uh, and you're not on your bike and you need something that's actually going to keep you dry, properly dry. Um, so it's got a hood and that hood rolls away and packs into the collar. Um, it's got Kevlar um, uh, panels on the shoulders and the elbows. Now again, this is not necessarily, uh, it's not a CE rated jacket. It's not there to provide motorcycle protection. It's to, there to provide element protection. Um, so I would wear this, uh, if I had it in my bag, I would have the super shirt on. If I got cold, I would put this Baltic hybrid on that I'm wearing now. Um, and then I would put the Baltic, uh, I would put the single track jacket over the top to provide more wind protection or rain protection. Um, all my actual um, protection from falling is provided by the soup shirt. So it's got great big vents that kind of start here, come all the way down and end down there. I don't know if my arm's gone off frame there, um, but essentially you can unzip them all the way down, which creates a huge amount of cooling. Um, I guess it's for those situations where it's not necessarily the middle of winter, but you're riding in um, spring, summer, autumn, and you're actually quite hot. Um, but the, the weather is variable. It's rain on, off, on, off. And you don't necessarily want to be taking the jacket on and off completely. Um, so you can undo these zips and uh, regulate your temperature as you're riding. It's got a hydrostatic head of 28,000 millimeters. Um, we've got another film that explains what that means. Um, I just want to kind of mention at this point, um, I saw some comments about people kind of saying, adventure back claim, uh, you know, that this jacket is 100% waterproof. We don't claim that any of our gear is 100% waterproof. We claim that it's very waterproof. Um, hydrostatic head measurements are there to help you understand how much uh, uh, water pressure a garment or a fabric can withstand before the water droplet gets pushed through. Um, if you exceed 28,000 millimeters uh, of pressure, so if you're in a very, 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 very wet scenario, um, water will get through. Every single garment, especially a breathable garment, has a limit. Um, 28,000 millimetres is very, very high, um, comparable with kind of um, the most extreme outdoor waterproof gear that you can buy uh, in a regular outdoor shop. I guess the thing that makes the single track jacket appealing to adventure bike riders is it has those qualities of an outdoor waterproof jacket, but also has what you need for motorcycling, such as extra um, toughness on the shoulders and the elbows um, and it also has a long tail um, so if you're stood up riding along it's designed to you, well we know you get spray up the back of the jacket up the back up your back um, it's helped to keep kind of some of that spray off your bum as you're riding uh, and the arm length again is cut for uh, leaning forward which is not something you normally do when you're wearing a standard walking jacket um, so it's a little bit generous on the arms because we know that your arms can be stretched forwards a lot of the time. This photo shows the Sinclair jacket packed into the ADV layer pouch large. Uh, just kind of worth flagging up here that the new Magadan luggage that we've just launched 
um, comes with a molly system and some of those molly bags are designed to, to accommodate your waterproof gear so it's there when you need it as you're riding um, and this is the ADV layer pouch large um, you can see here Clive's got his CRF 300 rally set up with the Magadans um, again there's another film specifically about those bags if you want to find out more The other waterproof option is the Aquapack jacket, which is very, very similar to the single track jacket, but a little bit more stripped back. Um, really just designed as your kind of um, always in your bag in case it rains jacket. So it doesn't have a hood, it doesn't have the Kevlar panels, it doesn't have all of the pockets. It's a very, very simple um, waterproof jacket, but it has the same hydrostatic head of 28,000 millimeters. This is Clive. Uh, again on our horrendous journey back to the ferry on the last day looking a little bit less grumpy uh, than Adam uh, thumbs up Davey feeling pretty heroic there and this is uh, Will on a recent trip so this is not in Spain but this was Will was up riding with me a couple of weeks ago on his 690 up in the north of England um, in Northumberland on the way up to Scotland and Will had been wearing the linesman jacket it started hammering down with rain there you can see Will's got the um, Krieger US5 uh, tail pack on the back of his bike um, we just stopped put that waterproof jacket on and it was fine for the rest of the day or at least until it stopped raining and then Will took the jacket off again and packed it away. I guess the point there really with the waterproofs is, um, uh, I mean, I have ridden in, in really good technical um, uh, jacket and pants from other manufacturers. Um, and if it's wet and raining all day, yeah, by all means, uh, a fully uh, waterproof jacket and pant all in one system is great, you know, um, but, if you're riding and it is not raining, why uh, ride in something that is heavier uh, and less breathable uh, that's designed to keep you dry when you're riding in the sunshine? And that really is the point of ADV layering, is put a waterproof jacket on when it's raining. When it stops raining, take it off. You will be more comfortable. And the Aquapack fits in the ADV layer pouch, um, the single track, goes in the ADV layer pouch large because it's a bit more substantial. I guess the point here is just showing that the Aquapack packs down super, super small. It actually packs all the way down into a pocket in its own, um, in its own jacket. <laughs> so it packs into itself. Um, but it will also fit in this ADV layer pouch, which is part of the Magadan luggage system. Okay, gloves. So, Trail riding is an interesting one because um, you are on the road for some times and off the road for some times. For this trip, I had a set of waterproof uh, road-based CE certified gloves um, for the kind of long road section. And then for the trail section, when we were in Spain, I was using the new Adventure Spec Alpine windproof glove. Um, the, there are two gloves available at the moment. There's the dirt glove and the alpine glove. The dirt glove is super, super lightweight. Um, you virtually kind of can't feel anything on there. Um, it's a very, very thin glove, um, off-road glove. Uh, and the alpine version is, again, it's an off-road glove. It's not necessarily designed for road riding, um, but it is a little bit more substantial than the, well, it's quite a bit more substantial than the dirt glove, yet it's still quite um, a thin feel. Um, you can feel all of the levers and everything you need through the handlebars as you're riding. So Adam doing his classic, you get a theme here uh, going with Adam. Um, they uh, are touchscreen sensitive, so you can operate your smartphone. Um, smartphone? Every phone's a smartphone. Why, you know, why did I just say smartphone? Anyway, that makes me seem old. <laughs> um, but you can use your touchscreen device so I guess the point there is you can also use your GPS um, navigation device um, and it's the um, uh, material on those fingertips has uh, that conductivity kind of sewn into it uh, or woven into it so it's not something that's going to rub off. So this is Chris here not in Spain um, but up here in Northumberland uh, a little while ago um, and I guess the point, the final point I want to make on these gloves, it's very easy to do buckles and chin straps and even take photos with it without having to take the glove off. So that's the top half dealt with. We're now onto the bottom half. Um, 
And here we have Will uh, very gamely agreeing to uh, model the uh, Adventure Spec core shorts. Uh, we'd come across, we'd been riding in the heat all day and we'd come across um, this amazing waterfall pool. Uh, so Will and I stopped and, and uh, went and got in. It was, uh, it was stunning and it was also absolutely freezing, <laughs> uh, but very, very refreshing. And we just stripped down to our core shorts. I was wearing a pair as well and dived in there. Um, I guess we did that knowing that um, those shorts are very, very quick to dry. Uh, they're very, you can just wring them out um, and they're damp. Uh, you put them on the back of your bike in the sunshine and probably by the time you get where you're going, they'll be dry. Um, I think that the core shorts are one of the most underrated bits of our kit out there. Um, you know, why would you bother spending a bit of money on a pair of um, pants? You know, you just wear whatever you've got. Well, uh, they're very comfortable. Um, if you're wearing trousers that are very breathable, they help keep your crotch warm when it's cold. Um, these particular pants, again, have got the silver iron yarns in that I explained earlier, which means that they stay fresher for longer, which means, especially with your pants, you can just take less kit. Uh, you know, the idea of going away for seven or 10 days and taking like five or six pairs of pants and how much space that takes up in your bag, and then half the time you're just riding around with dirty pants in your bag, taking up space. Is just crazy. So um, my standard setup is two pairs of core shorts. Um, three pairs would be a luxury, but essentially you're riding in one pair, the other pair you've washed and is dry uh, or drying, ready to be worn again. And you just keep rotating them. Um, very underrated, very comfortable. Um, yeah, I w can't really kind of recommend them enough. And Will here has got the uh, core long leg, um, which is essentially the same, but longer. Um, core long leg for me comes into its own when I'm doing kind of long motorway sections. If I know all day I'm just going to be riding down the motorway, I'll put the core long leg on just to provide a little bit more um, uh, warmth uh, while I'm riding. And then also uh, at camp when it's cold and you need essentially a pair of long johns. Um, uh, yeah. I, I guess whenever I've slept in uh, altitude or in particularly cold conditions, I mean, I've got a really good Arab sleeping bag um, and it keeps me really warm. Um, it's very easy to regulate your upper body because you can put a jacket on, but I find that it's actually my, my legs and my feet that get cold that make me wake up in the night. So I've spent a bit more time recently putting more effort into keeping my lower body warm uh, as I go to sleep uh, and I find that I do get a better night for it. Okay, on top of the lower leg base layers, we've got our um, riding pants. So here we've got Davey, who is wearing the Mongolia trail pant. Um, so the, like the jacket, there's an Atacama version and a Mongolia version. The Atacama version is what Lyndon was wearing, was wearing on um, during the Dakar rally, which are an in the boot version. Um, and the Mongolia pant is an over the boot per version. So for most trail riding, um, we find people are going for the Mongolia pant. Um, the in the boot, the Atacama pant is really more focused at people that are rallying. Um, so over the boot, in the boot, um, really, if you're going places where uh, you're going through water or you're going dust or but basically an in the boot pant is great for racing because it's trim. Um, it's not in the way, there's nothing flapping around, but you get stuff in your boots, um, which is fine if you're only out for a day and then you kind of go and putting everything away, getting your kit away and you can get change and go home. But if you're kind of on multi-day trips or you're going in places that are particularly kind of adverse weather conditions, you don't really want to be riding down the road while it's raining a bit and the rain's running into your boots or you're going through puddles and the water's going into your boots or mud or whatever. So really an over the boot pant is great for trail riding. Um, what to note on the Mongolia pant. So 
uh, for this particular trip, which was very hot weather, um, they've got these great big thigh um, vents, so some zips that come all the way down the front of the, vi the thigh, um, almost from your crotch to your knee, um, and you can open those up and you get a huge amount of cooling going through there. Um, they've got these stretch panels in the crotch area, which helps you when you need to get your leg over um, your bike to get on and off, especially when you've got luggage and you've kind of got to get step over your bike. Um, it's very stretchy. Um, there um, if you they come with their CEAA rated and they come with knee armor um, included if you uh, prefer riding in um, uh, knee braces the knee box is cut quite generously so it's not going to be tight around your knee they're designed to be able to um, accommodate knee braces um, and I guess the the last real kind of significant point on this is that they've got a very, very wide lower leg opening. So the way the lower leg opens is that it has Velcro um, to, uh, uh, and it comes all the way up, um, the opening comes all the way up to kind of the top of your thigh. And the Velcro provides part of the close, closure, and then there's a buckle, an additional buckle. Um, and the reason why we've got that additional buckle is if you're riding in muddy conditions, you will know that Velcro fails. Um, and after a while, your bottom of your legs just start flapping around because if the only way to close it is Velcro, once that's failed, there's no way of keeping it closed. So we included this buckle. It's an adjust once buckle. So you basically set the, um, the tension on it or the, um, the length of the, the strap on the buckle once. Um, and once that's set, it'll always be there. So you can always close it and it'll go to the um, right position, if that makes sense. There's more information on the website about that if you want a bit more info. Um, but yeah, we found that even with kind of tech um, eights, tech tens, um, the big chunky motocross boots, these are open and closed, no problems. Um, and they're pretty popular with people that uh, ride in those big chunky heavy motocross boots. So this is Will going through a river crossing. Um, I guess I included this water here just to say that the uh, Mongolia pants are water resistant. They're pretty good with um, uh, even a relatively significant um, dowsing of water, but they are not waterproof. So if you are going for prolonged periods through rain, in fact, quite a lot of the materials used on the Mongolia pant are waterproof, but it's not taped. So we cannot say that they are waterproof pants. So if you're riding through heavy rain, for a prolonged period of time, you will need a waterproof uh, overpan. Okay, so the lines on the pan. Um, I've been very excited about this pan <laughs> uh, for quite a long time. I've been riding it through from, uh, well, the original designs through the various prototypes to where we are today. Last week, we got our final um, certification on these, they came through uh, CEAA rated, which is what we were aiming for, which is great news. I think when you try these on, the thing that you're gonna be most impressed by is that these are um, an adventure uh, trail riding pant that are so comfortable and so light, you really can't believe that they achieved a CEAA rating, um, but they did. Uh, they are the most comfortable riding pant I have ever um, ridden in. The material that they're made out of is, is very stretchy. Um, so it's kind of designed to provide a lot of comfort, a lot of stretch and a lot of breathability. They're purposefully toned down. Um, we didn't want a pant that looked like a riding pant. We wanted something. I, know, I was looking on Instagram and I was noticing people going out trail riding in a pair of jeans and a linesman jacket. Uh, and that's what people were choosing to ride in. They wanted something that wasn't overly technical um, or didn't look overly technical. They wanted to blend in and fit in, especially with this kind of European riding where you're going from campsite to town to little village and you don't necessarily want to look like a spaceman walking around in a big motorcycle suit. So the whole point of the linesman um, pant similar to the linesman jacket is to have a very toned down um, look. Um, it has um, the same Kevlar panels that are used on our single track jacket are used on the knees. Um, it's not a waterproof pant but what those Kevlar panels allow you to do is it provides a moisture barrier um, on the knee 
um, and also an abrasion barrier. So it's going to withstand um, what, for example, I get my camera out and I'm on my knees a lot, bending down, taking photos. You might be working on the bike or um, at camp or whatever, but essentially you're on your knees um, squatting down and the Kevlar panels there um, protect your knees and stop the water from coming through. So here's Noel on his CRF uh, 250L, um, making his way through Spain in the, uh, in, in the linesman pant. Um, you can see uh, the lower leg of the pant is quite stretchy. Yeah, so I think Noel's wearing the former Adventure motorcycle boots. So um, you can see that the, um, the pant is designed to stretch over um, and accommodate the, those boots. Um, I guess if the fabric wasn't so stretchy, we would have to cut the pant a lot baggier and a lot looser because a lot of um, motorcycle, adventure motorcycle boots have got buckles all the way up the top. Um, because the, the fabric is so stretchy, we could keep quite a regular cut. It's like a regular pair of trousers or a pair of jeans. And that means that um, you can take your boots off and walk around and you don't have these great big bell bottoms flapping around. They're very kind of natural. But when you have got your boots on, they stretch over. I would say, that if you are wearing big uh, kind of Tech 7s, Tech 10s, motocross style boots, they're not really designed for you. It does look a bit weird stretched over great big boots. You're probably going to be better with the Mongolia pant. Um, but if you wear more of an adventure style boot, which isn't so chunky and big up at the top, they're absolutely perfect. So this is Chris in the studio with the um, Lysman pant and the single track jacket. Chris with the linesman pant and linesman jacket. And this is just showing the way the linesman pant is cut at the bottom. So we've got these large generous zips that run up the back of the pants so you can get them over your boot and then you zip it down and you've got this um, uh, extra buckle that keeps it closed at the bottom of the pant. I, I made uh, Chris do this in the studio here just to show the, the stretch really. Um, again, um, it's for getting your leg over your bike when you're adventure riding you've got quite often got luggage that goes on the back end of your bike on the tail of the bike which means that you've got to step over or step through your bike rather than swinging your leg over um, and you'll be surprised uh, with some pants that are not really designed to do that it can actually make getting on and off your bike quite difficult um, so yeah so the linesman pant is very stretchy and you haven't got any problems stepping through so this is chris wearing the super shirt and the linesman pant um, I just wanted to include this one to show you how it's cut. So it's purposefully cut quite high. So the super shirt is cut low. So that there's a lot of length on the bottom of the super shirt. So you can tuck it right deep into your pants to stop it from riding up. The linesman pant is cut quite high. Um, and again, that's um, to add a little bit more um, protection um, right the way up to where the, um, uh, the back armor starts. So yeah, so the Lysen Pant will be out later this year, depending on where you, you're uh, watching this video. Um, go have a look at our website. Um, I am very, very excited to see uh, you riding in these. Um, I've really enjoyed them for the last year. Okay, so that was uh, pretty much a full rundown of all the adventure spec gear and a few extra bits. I guess the only thing we haven't talked about is feet. Uh, we don't, Adventure Spec don't make socks or boots yet, um, we may in the future. Um, I was wearing a pair of Bridgedale socks, um, quite expensive but incredibly comfortable um, and very very quick drying um, which is kind of quite a key thing. Um, you want your kit to be able to dry very quickly uh, if you've kind of washed it and you're riding in it the next day. Um, I had a pair of City Adventure 2 motorcycle adventure motorcycle boots. Um, if you disregard the squeak, uh, which is the standard City squeak, uh, they're the best um, adventure motorcycle boots I've ever owned. Very, very comfortable, incredibly waterproof. I've had mine probably five years now. Um, they've been used a lot. The, I've started to notice the leather is starting to crack a little bit, um, but I haven't really been treating it, so that's partly my fault. Um, but yeah, I used to wear the former Adventure boots. Noel wears the former boots. Formers are great, they're incredibly comfortable, um, but they're very soft and don't give a huge amount of protection up the ankle. Um, and also my pair 
didn't really stay waterproof for that long. Um, City Adventure 2s have been great. I've been wearing those. Clive was wearing a pair. Davey was wearing a pair. Um, Adam had a set of um, motocross style boots on. Um, I'm not really sure which ones they were. And Will had a pair of Alpine Star Tech 7s, um, which are, um, again, quite a motocross style boot, but offer a lot of protection. Okay, uh, we're at the end. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope that is... Um, helped you understand a little bit more about what gear we use, what clothing we used and why. Um, again, just to round up with the whole ADV layering um, philosophy. Um, look, if you are prepared to put a bit of effort in, which means stopping every now and then when the conditions change, you will find that your comfort level is greatly increased for the style of riding that we're doing, which is road, trail, tracks, single track, uh, uh, wide gravel track, altitude, sunshine, rain, all of the rest of it. If you are prepared to slow down, stop, get changed when the conditions change, you will be comfortable for those conditions you're riding in. Um, if you just wanna keep going and not stop, a one suit does everything absolutely fine for you. Um, for me personally, if it's not uh, if it's not raining, I don't really want to wear a waterproof gear. Um, find out more about Adventure Spec clothing and our approach to trail riding, which is very much along kind of the light is right philosophy um, on our website. Um, you can get me in smaller bite-sized chunks on our email newsletter. I put an email newsletter out every week um, with hints and tips and product reviews and all the rest of it. Um, I put quite a lot of effort into it. I'm quite proud of it. Um, I'd love it if you would join me over there. Um, thank you again for your time. Um, and I hope you have a fantastic trans Euro Trail, backcountry adventure, Australian outback, African trip, wherever it is that you're riding, I hope you have a great, safe journey. See you soon. Oh, I knew I forgot something. Go watch the film. It's a good one. See if we can run Greg Villalobos off the side of a mountain, but <laughs> obviously that was completely safe to do. We're going two up on the KTM. I'll squish your banana, mate. No, get off my banana. It's slowing down. Maybe it's something we can do here. Maybe if I just go. Yeah, it works. <laughs> We really thought that we would be uh, up here in the snow at the moment. We've packed our thermals. And the only snow we've seen at the moment is all the way in the distance over there. So that's the edge of the Pyrenees. So far.